All right, we're going to go back now and revisit the Cavendish experiment because it is such a, a brilliant um, experiment, brilliantly performed, um, that has uh, enormous historical significance relative to what we are able to accomplish uh, to utilize uh, Newton's law for universal gravitation. Having the G value allows us to actually not just believe that that's the equation that governs how the planets work, but we can actually make calculations. We can uh, go to the moon. We can, we can uh, fire rockets and, and predict where they're going to, to be. We can put satellites in orbit. So we have two schematics here. The first one here on the right is an illustration of the actual apparatus that uh, Cavendish had built. Cavendish came from a wealthy family uh, so he had money to have this big shed built. So this was uh, this, these were this was big by comparison to what we would normally think of in the lab. So uh, the shed was about the size of, of of our classroom. It was big, and the, the big metal spheres he was using were big lead spheres, because essentially what he's trying to do here, and to understand the brilliance of it, is to measure the gravitational pull, the sideways gravitational pull on two objects uh, here on the surface of the Earth. And, and to kind of put it into perspective, think of yourself walking down the street in the city and thinking about, oh, I wonder how much gravity that big building on the left is pulling on me sideways. Well, for all intents and purposes, it's zero because the gravity of the Earth is so enormous pulling downward on us. So that was the task that, that he was attacking. He was trying to look at the sideways pull of gravity on two objects. So you need an extremely sensitive apparatus to do this. And as it turns out, the torsion balance um, gave him that capability. So let's see how the torsion balance works. So the first thing we need to understand about the torsion balance, and we're going to go over here and look at our illustration here on the left to see how the torsion balance works, is to recognize that it fundamentally it is going to utilize a thread that when it twists, as shown here, it will want to untwist. And that property is the property that, they are, that Cavendish utilized to be able to measure the torque that gravity ultimately would cause on the little masses uh, M and M to twist the fiber. So before he could actually do his experiment, however, and this is important, so please get this part down in your notes. Uh, before he could begin his experiment, Cavendish needed to do this part, number two. So he needed to have the torsion uh, balance calibrated. So we know from our torsion pendulum that the twist of that fiber, that torque, will equal uh, negative kappa theta for small angles, theta. And what Cavendish first had to do was uh, put known forces. So forget about the, the big M. So this would be done before the, the big metal spheres, the metal lead spheres were brought in. He would put known forces on the fiber to get it to t twist small angles theta because that calibration would allow him then to have a value for the torsion uh, constant for that thread. And we're going to see why that was essential for him in a moment here. So what he would then do, what he then did, was bring in these large metal spheres and looked at how much the fiber twisted due to the gravitational force pulling sideways right, on these small masses. So it would be an ex ex extremely small value. Any um, vibrations or... Uh, uh, any any wind or movement would certainly destroy the measurement. So that's why it was totally enclosed. He would have to do it many measurements over many days to be assured that there, there wasn't uh, something shaking the ground a little bit uh, that would have messed up his measurements. So hopefully the mathematics here uh, follows through to you that um, he was using 90 degrees when he put his calibrated force twist in there because when we look at the actual sideways force that gravity exerts, we get a 90 degree 
angle between the radius r vector, which would be known. So r was r was known. Uh, well, actually, we'll go down here. R was was known. Kappa he got through his calibration. Uh, theta was a measurement, so that was tricky. So that's where the mirror here, and he had a light source, and coming in daylight coming in through his dark uh, shed. He had a mirror here, and you could look at the angle theta here would would be then magnified. Onto the scale that, that you have over here, and he had a little telescope he would look in here with to look at the the reflection of that mirror. Exceedingly difficult experiment, but when you look at now at what is possible theoretically, the gravitational force takes the place of the force twist. So now you bring in the large spheres, the the gravity force the g, capital M, little m over d squared, and so you're clear as to what the d squared is, where that d comes from. That's the distance, center of mass to center of mass distance between capital M and little m, so get that into your notes so you know what the d is. So that's the, the d in the d squared that we have down here. And now everything is known. The only unknown is going to be the uh, gravitational uh, g, because Big M, remember, is not the mass of the Earth. That's his lead sphere, so he knows everything, right? He knows the M, the capital M, he knows the little m, the, the d is known, that's measurable. He calibrated to get his torsional constant. The r, the distance from the pivot, right, to the r distance here, right? That is known, everything is known, and the G value, based on his measurements, corresponds to 6.74 times 10 to the minus 11. And amazingly, that number is, to this day, within 1% different from our accepted value that we have been using in this chapter all along. So an absolutely uh, amazing experiment, amazingly uh, precise and uh, just of, of great historical significance because once the, the G value is known, now we can take Newton's uh, equation and elevate it from just saying, well, yes, it's how it, it governs what's going on, but we can use it practically to, to fire rockets to go to the moon, to put satellites in orbit. Um, now, it's, now it's an equation that, that can be used. So hopefully uh, you enjoyed looking at the Cavendish experiment and learn, learning more about gravitation.